Hello everybody, my name is Sam Gregory. Welcome along to another one of these photo speed videos. And now I'm actually here today to do another one of these series where we're comparing different papers with the same image. But actually this time I'm comparing two papers across two different images. So the papers are gonna be the Platinum Cotton 305 and the Platinum Etching 285. And as you can see here, we've got a black and white image, which is fairly contrasty, big dynamic range, and we've got a more muted, subtle color portrait image here for us to look at as well. So what I'll do in just a moment is I'll jump into the computer, tell you a little bit about the images and, and the printing of them, and then we'll spend a few minutes afterwards taking a good look at a couple of close-ups, paper versus paper, on each image, and I'll give you some of my thoughts about maybe which one is suited best for which image. Now, just before we do that, if you do enjoy the videos as ever, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when the next photo speed video comes out. And I do hope uh, that you find these comparison videos uh, really interesting and useful when you're choosing which papers uh, are best for your photographic prints. But without any further ado, let's quickly jump into the computer, walk through the printing, and then we'll have a good old look at how these papers compare on both of these images. Okay, everybody, so this is our black and white image, as you can see. And uh, of course, this um, is our color image here. So just a little bit of background about the images. The color one uh, was shot in the Lake District on a very uh, sort of foggy, misty morning, as you often get, as we all know, near bodies of water, especially. And uh, it was, you know, just one of those beautiful mornings where everything looks <laughs> looks very photogenic, uh, and especially just this little curve away here of the shoreline away into the lake and obviously the way that the trees sort of arch arch over here and uh, you can see actually there's a little bit of blue up here in the top left where that fog is just clearing and what I'm hoping to get with the print uh, when you do an image like this is some of this softness that you find especially down in this right hand side area of the mist and fog uh, against obviously the sort of more textured uh, areas of the trees the branches up here and um, these beautiful leaves down here there's that warmth to the tone and obviously that texture again. So what we're hoping with the image is that um, is when the print comes out, you're still retaining some of those qualities. You can see up here in the histogram, it's shot F11. So we've got good sharpness front to back. And uh, we've just about, just about got all the data in the histogram there. It's a fairly broad dynamic range, isn't it? Right from the bottom left to the top right. So that's on the color one and the black and white one, which is actually the one I'm gonna print and talk about first. Uh, this was actually in New Zealand, uh, South Island of New Zealand, which is a very incredible place to go, uh, you know, both photographically and just generally. And uh, I was very lucky to be there. And you can see here again, this is a fairly uh, broad dynamic range. We've got these darker sort of shadow areas. There is some detail in there. And uh, I've left them quite dark though. I haven't, I haven't sort of tried to pull them out. I think I'm a big believer in using the shadows that are there. Uh, it helps give shape and form and depth uh, to an image, especially when you have nice highlighted areas uh, front perhaps and behind like we have here on this sort of small area here at the front. And obviously this sort of ridge line here up at the back. And uh, I've chosen this image in particular because we've got these textured details of the foreground and of the ridge line, we've got these heavy uh, dark shadows, we've got these highlighted areas and also the sky which is fairly highlighted as well. And if we just have a quick look at that on the soft proof in the platinum etching, uh, you can see here I'm going to probably use the relative uh, rather than perceptual. Uh, and what we'll do actually if we just go into the print module now, uh, I am uh, just going to set this up and get this printed out and uh, I'll put it on both papers. What we'll do is we'll just remove any print adjustment. Uh, we'll get that printed out. We'll have a chat about this on the etching and the platinum cotton, and we'll have a look at the color one as well. Okay, now we have the prints out in front of us. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you some close-ups uh, from another camera angle as well, as opposed to just having to see what I'm talking about here on this shot. Um, but there's a couple of differences. Firstly, uh, I've got the platinum cotton here on your left, my right, and the one closest to me is the platinum etching. Now, because of the uh, OBA free in the platinum cotton, uh, I wondered about the white point and, and how that may be, because often uh, paper with 
OBAs is an optical brightening agent. At first, they feel like the white point, or they feel like they're a little brighter. But actually, on these uh, images here, for me, uh, because of the kind of natural warmth, perhaps, that's in the platinum etching, I feel like, especially at the top, uh, the clouds in particular of this image um, on the platinum cotton do feel uh, brightest and whitest to me, uh, whereas on the platinum etching here, they are a little darker, uh, both tonally and, and, and just in the kind of feel of them, so to speak. Uh, now, I actually think that depends a little bit what you want and what you had done in the edit, but I think actually the platinum cotton is the winner here for me for a couple of reasons. One is that cloud rendition up at the top. Two, uh, the fine details, so the very, very fine details of which there is plenty here of this texture at the bottom and the texture up on the ridge lines as well. Uh, I feel that just is even more precise, even more uh, clinical, even more pin sharp on the Platinum Cotton 305 than it is on the Platinum etching. And that's no doubt due to the surface and how that's been uh, developed. And the final reason I would choose the Platinum Cotton, just on this example, um, is how it handles the shadows on that big left-hand side mountain there. Um, difficult for you to see, I appreciate, especially through the video, but um, because I feel that paper, uh, the Platinum Cotton I'm talking about here, can actually take a slightly deeper black point, um, it really makes that quite striking over there. There is still detail in it if you, if you really want to peer, but even on the image, on the actual histogram, we are right down near the bottom, we haven't lost anything, um, but I just feel it renders that a bit more, uh, with a bit more contrast, let's say. It's a bit more punchy on the platinum cotton than it is on the platinum etching. And one of the things with platinum etching is there isn't a huge and deep black point uh, that it can deliver, so it's slightly limited in that way. Now that is only a criticism if you're doing these very heavy contrast images. For softer black and whites, more <clears throat> kind of uh, monochromatic greys, you know what I'm saying, less dynamic range, less deep contrasts, I actually think the platinum, co uh, excuse me, the platinum etching is a really nice um, paper still for black and white, and it's still one of the ones that I do use the most. But in this instance, I'm gonna give it to the Platinum Cotton 305, and it was really fun for me to do this because I hadn't really used it for black and white before the Platinum Cotton 305, and I actually think it's a really fab uh, black and white paper, especially, like I say, in these more contrasty scenes. So that's our black and white image. Let's just make a quick swap, and we'll jump to the more muted uh, autumnal color image. Okay, so let's get into the color image. And I'm gonna just say off the top, uh, whew, this was very, very difficult to really come to any sort of conclusion on. I'll be completely honest with you. They're both very, very similar, and they both rendered the image very, very similarly as well. So just to be clear, I'm using uh, custom profiles for my setup, my screen, my Canon Pro 300, uh, and I'm using the same uh, relative uh, color intent, and um, no, no differences in the print. So I haven't adjusted one for, for anything more or one for anything less. They're just with the custom profiles straight out of the printer from the, from the edited file, so to speak. And uh, yeah, really, really tricky. Now, I think what I would say, I slightly favor the platinum etching, uh, but it's more of one of those things that you feel rather than that I can articulate massively well. What I would say is um, on the sort of more muted, softer images where maybe there's a bit of mist or something like that, on very close inspection with platinum etching, because the um, surface is, is less um, tightly packed, shall we say, it's more a little more spread out. I think you'll know what I mean if you've seen those papers. Uh, if you just peer at it very closely, you can see when there's uh, misty areas or sky, you can see a little bit of the paper detail, that's what I'm angling at. But I only think that's an issue if you're literally, you know, a few inches from the uh, from the paper. Whereas if you stand back and actually look at it from a few feet away, which most kind of normal people viewing it would do when it's on the wall or whatever it might be, I actually think that slight softness in the paper uh, surface uh, is what gives the platinum etching a really beautiful feel on these more muted, more subtle, maybe like I say, misty or softer kind of images, if you will. Now, that said, there are you know, textured features in here. There's obviously all the branches and actually the leaves at the bottom. And one of the things that I think did come out slightly better on the platinum etching is um, just the color and the texture in these leaves down here. I just feel like I kind of want to touch them uh, and that, that warmth to them as well. 
Really difficult though, very, very close. And uh, I'm impressed with both papers and how they've rendered the image so close to what is uh, what we've been seeing on the screen. And that all comes from being calibrated and all the other things to do with custom profiles that we understand. So in summary, these two papers, although there are differences in how they're made, and I've obviously showed those up through the graphics in the, uh, in the video here, I actually think they're not massively dissimilar in how they render uh, color images in particular. Black and white, there was definitely more uh, difference between them, whereas the color, very, very, very similar. So it may just depend on the particular image or if you have stock of one or the other, whatever it might be. But if you've always used platinum etching and you've never tried the platinum cotton, I would recommend giving it a go. Certainly uh, for any sort of color or more high contrast black and white is fantastic. Uh, and vice versa, if you've never tried the platinum etching and you have maybe these more subtle images uh, where you still want to retain some texture, but you want to retain that mood of that subtlety that you get on a lovely matte paper, uh, then I would give the platinum etching a try as well if you haven't done that yet. Now, as ever, if you're really not sure, just order some of the test packs, which you can get from photospeed.com, and they send you a selection of the different signature papers. You can have matte, glossy, all sorts of different options on your test packs. And then you can print an image out on a few different papers and see what you think and see which one works best for you. Anyway, that's it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Do remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell if you want to keep up with all these photo speed related videos. Uh, my name is Sam Gregory and I shall speak to you again very soon.